warn you, this shit tastes foul when you put it in your dog. Try to swallow all of it, it'll knock your fucking socks off. So the two of us were wired, and the festival's in flow. We wander round and watch some bands, smiling as we go. As the day turns into night time, the fire's being lit. We dance to an unknown DJ, and sneak a little kiss. Well, being drunk and making girls seem prettier than she is. I'm not the only one who's made mistakes, but I was pissed. And trying to work out right from wrong on ecstasy is tough. But it I'm amazing, feel like I'm in love. And with the night comes brand new friends everywhere we go. And we're sitting round campfires with people we don't know. And every time we move along, we have another dab. I'm gurning my face off, but I'm really, really glad. We're cuddling and kissing, we're talking like a team. Dancing so intensely, the life and love and dreams. As the moon watches the sunrise, it opens up the day. We just open up the rack for more MDMA. Well, being drunk can make a girl seem prettier than she is. I'm not the only one who's made mistakes when I was pissed. And trying to work out right from wrong on ecstasy is tough. It's empty and amazing. I feel like I'm in love. Sometimes I like to tell stories at this part of the song. I know it's Friday night, but you reckon you can handle a story? <laughs> They've got a whole bunch of these I normally mix up, so you guys get to choose. I don't like to be too repetitive. But there's a story about Manchester, a story about Bedford, or a story about... Well, no. Hear all your choices first, guys. Or a story about Reading. Reading! Why did you all choose Reading? All right. I'll tell a story about Reading, it's actually got nothing, the other ones have something to do with this song, this is just a, the other one is just a Reading story, it's just a random festival story. But it's quite a confusing story, so you're going to have to bear with me, ready? I'll tell it as quick as I can, I can't believe you chose Reading. No one ever fucking chooses Reading. Alright, so Reading, I can't remember what year it was, but you know Rage Against the Machine? Well they were playing, they were headlining and, the, and I grew up near Reading so I, I used to go to Reading Festival loads yes! and uh, it was the first time I played it and if you play Reading Festival you have to play Leeds Festival but obviously there's a bit of kind of like jovial beef between the two so I was like fuck Leeds, you know, I don't want to go there but I, I want to be at Reading but like I was, the deal was I played and I, I drove up, played Leeds, came back and uh, you still with me? And uh, so Rage are headlining and basically it's Rage's comeback tour and they walk on stage. I watched them on Friday night at Reading and they walk on stage in Guantanamo Bay outfits with like bin liners over their heads and, and, and sort of came on. And I was like, to, honest, I was like as a, to me it was a bit of a sucky statement. It was like, what the fuck man, you know, you did your reunion tour. I wasn't, for whatever reason I wasn't into it, I was a young arrogant prick. And, uh, and then I was like, well, the next day I was playing in Leeds at two o'clock in the afternoon in some shit tent, like to, to, like, to no one. But it was before they were playing, basically. And it just so happened in my night out, I found an orange jumpsuit and a fucking bin liner. So I was like, I'm gonna go on stage. And I walked on stage in a Guantanamo Bay outfit and said, I am, and I was basically, it turns out I was playing before Henry Rollins. So the place was fucking rammed of all these like, you know, like politically thinking sort of like punk rockers. And I walked out and I was like, I am making a profound political statement. And everyone rightly so was like, this guy is a fucking dick. <laughs> Which is kind of what I wanted them to think. Cause they know that. And then when, Ra in my head, when Rage went on later that night, they'd be like, fucking hell. That guy did that at two o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> And I didn't tell anyone about it apart from one friend. I did it and I was like, kind of laughing at my own joke and uh, fucked off back to Reading. And the one person that I did tell about it 
at like 10 o'clock that night they just dropped me a text and they said Ray's got their set cut short and they didn't do the Guantanamo Bay <laughs> So there's a whole bunch of people in Leeds that just think I'm a dick. <laughs> but I tried, yeah. And then I woke beneath a tree in the pissing down the rain. The pretty girl had disappeared with her MDMA. And the festival was over, because everything was closed. There's just abandoned tents here now. And people going home. Well, I miss my limp to London. My money's all been spot. I've even lost my mobile phone. I think, I think I'm fast. And then from out of nowhere, bounding across the field, smiling like a summer's day, comes my pretty girl. And she bought a cup of tea for me. She kisses me on the lips. And she whispers in my ear, she bought some lip real. 